right, so we've talked about reflection, and we've talked about mirrors, and we've talked about refraction, so now it's time to talk about lenses. Lenses are the piece of optical equipment, maybe, um, that take advantage of light's refraction. So first of all, I want to look at this big blown up version of a light ray, of a lens over here, and I want to think about what happens to the light ray as it goes through. So <clears throat> let's imagine a light ray that we have coming in like so. When it hits the surface of the lens, it's going to bend. The light ray is going to refract when it goes through the lens because it's traveling into a new medium. So when light rays hit a mirror, they bounce. When light rays hit a lens, they bend. And it's going to bend when it hits the surface of the lens and goes into the medium. How do we know how it bends? We know how it bends from Snell's law. So the law that we learned last time, the N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2, tells us how the light ray is going to bend. We're going to measure that line to the normal line. So I'm going to try to sketch, sketch a line here that's perpendicular to the lens. Now the index of refraction of, the, of whatever the lens is made of is going to be larger than the index of refraction of air because there's pretty much nothing with an index of refraction lower than air other than a vacuum. That means that the angle between the light ray and the normal line is going to be smaller inside the lens than it is outside the lens. So my light ray is going to be closer to that normal line. My light ray is going to keep traveling through the lens until it reaches the other side of the lens. Now it's going to go through a second transition, now from a lens into the air. Whatever material the lens is made of, the index of refraction of air is going to be less. So again, I need a perpendicular line here. But this time, since my index of refraction is smaller for the air than it was for the lens, the angle between my light ray and the normal line is actually going to be larger. So when a light ray goes through a lens, it bends twice. It bends once on one side of the lens and again on the other side of the lens. Um, and that's what really has to happen as it goes through the lens. Now, based on the curvature of the lens, you can see that this light ray has bent so that it's now going towards what we're going to draw to be the principal axis here in just a second. That's going to be the case for all the light rays that come towards this lens. Now, because it makes our lives simpler, and because we're kind of going to, we know what the properties of this lens are, we're not going to draw both of those refractions. We're going to pretend like a thin lens only bends a light ray once. So you'll see here I have a lens that has curvature on both sides, but I also have a line drawn just straight down the middle of the lens. That's the line that I'm going to bend my light rays at. Even though I know that my light ray technically bends twice, I'm going to pretend like it bends once. So, <clears throat> to figure out the properties of this lens, we're going to draw light rays coming in parallel to the principal axis, just like we did with our mirrors last week. The light ray is going to go. When the light ray hits the lens, it's going to bend. Because of the shape of this lens, this lens is a converging lens. And those light rays are going to bend toward the principal axis. Light rays and lenses are different than light rays and mirrors. With a mirror, the light ray bounced off of the mirror and came back. With a lens, the light ray continues through the lens, but its path changes. So what if instead my light ray started out farther from the principal axis? Again, the light ray will bend twice. It'll bend once at each surface of the lens, but we're going to pretend like it only bends once. And since the curvature is, is bigger up here farther from the principal axis, the light ray is going to bend more. It's going to bend at a larger angle. And what about a light ray that comes in below the principal axis? A light ray that comes in below the principal axis is going to bend toward the principal axis. In this case, it's going to bend to go up. You can see what's happening here, right? 
You can see that my light rays are all coming together at a point. That's why this is a converging lens. This point is the focal point of the lens, and the distance between the lens and this point is the focal length of the lens. So we're going to use exactly the same sign conventions for lenses that we did with mirrors. Since this is a converging lens, it's going to have a positive focal length. We're going to have a diverging lens here in a few minutes, and it's going to have a negative focal length. Now, lenses are different than mirrors in a couple of different ways, but one of them is that if light rays go the other way through a lens, um, well, they can't go the other way through a lens. Light rays can't travel backwards through a mirror. The other side of a mirror is completely opaque. But light rays can travel in both directions. What that means is that each lens is actually going to have two focal points, one on each side. I'm not going to go through and draw the parallel rays again. I'm just going to tell you that the focal point of the lens is the same distance from the lens on each side. This is why we have to keep track of whether our lens is converging or diverging to figure out what the sign of f should be. We can't just look at where the focal length is relative to the lens itself because there's a focal point on each side of the mirror. All right, so far so good. We have the properties of this lens. Now let's figure out what kinds of images it creates. I'm going to try to erase part, but not all of this picture so that I won't have to redraw. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm going to start with an object past the focal length of this uh, lens. I'm going to start with an arrow out here. All right. So the rays that I'm going to draw are actually going to have the same names and the same properties as the rays that I drew for mirrors. The first ray that I'll draw will be the principal ray. The principal ray comes in parallel to the principal axis, and then it bends to go through the focal point. All right, so let's line up our ruler with the top of my image, and we're going to draw it parallel to the principal axis. My light ray comes in parallel to the principal axis. When a light ray goes through a lens, what's it going to do? It's going to bend, and a light ray that comes in parallel to the principal axis, bends to go through the focal point. Okay, so far so good. The second ray we'll draw will be the focal ray. The focal ray is the harder ray to draw for lenses. I'll go ahead and show you how it works and we'll use it from time to time. The focal ray goes through the focal point and then goes out parallel to the principal axis. So my light ray is going to start at the top of my image, it's going to go through the focal point on the same side of the mirror, It's going to bend toward the principal axis. In fact, it's going to bend to be parallel to the principal axis. And I did not draw my principal ray far enough. Okay, those light rays are converging. I didn't draw the red one far enough, so we're going to have to go back and fix that in a second. The central ray, though, the central ray was a little bit useless when it came to mirror ray diagrams, I'm going to be honest. The central ray is the easiest and most useful light ray for lenses because the central ray goes through the center and it doesn't bend. All right, that's not true. What it actually does is it bends once on one side of the lens and then again on the other side of the lens, but the result is that the light ray doesn't bend. So my light ray starts at the top of my arrow, goes through the center point, the place where 
the lens crosses the principal axis and just keeps going. All right, I think you can all agree that if I drew those lines out far enough, they're trying to intersect. If I draw them farther, they're going to line up together. But we can go ahead and figure out what the properties of the image are without actually having those light rays converge. LOST stands for location, orientation, size, and type. Where will the location of this object be? Well, it's definitely past the focal point. We can tell that for sure. The orientation of this object is going to be inverted. This is an upside down object. Size is pretty hard to tell without actually drawing it, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be larger. Now, how about type? The light rays that are creating this image are actually real light rays. If I put a piece of paper out here, I'm going to be able to create this image on a piece of paper. This is a real image that I'm creating. All right, the thing that we've done the most in this class has not been to draw these ray diagrams. We don't have time to do that this time since we're doing this online. What we've done instead is use the lens mirror equation. So what I'd like to do is use the lens mirror equation to do these calculations. To do that, I'm going to have to make some measurements. I'm going to start by measuring the focal length of my mirror. The focal length of my mirror is 30 centimeters. My object distance, which is always positive, is 47 centimeters. And my object height, which is positive because it's upright, is 7 centimeters. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the image distance for this mirror. My image distance is going to be equal to my object distance times my focal length divided by my object distance minus my focal length. So I'm going to have to grab a calculator real quick to figure out what this image distance is going to be. 30 centimeters times 47 centimeters divided by... 47 centimeters minus 30 centimeters gives me a predicted image distance of 83 centimeters. And that seems pretty reasonable because it's way off over here. Also, it's positive. What does a positive sign for an image distance tell us? It tells us that the image is real, which is something we had already figured out from drawing our ray diagram. The other calculation that I can do here is the height of the image. But to do that, I'm going to need to find the magnification. The magnification for this image is going to be equal to minus di divided by do. My di and my do are both positive numbers. So what's the sign of my magnification going to be? It's going to be negative. And when I have a negative sign for my magnification, what do I see in my image? I see that it's inverted. So. 83 divided by 47 with a negative sign there gives me a magnification of minus 1.7. 1.77 is my magnification. So then the last thing I might want to find is the height of my image. The height of my image is my magnification times my object height. My object height was positive. My image height is negative because it's inverted, and my image height is minus 12.4 centimeters. So exactly the same equations that worked for mirrors work for lenses. There are only a couple of things we have to be a little bit careful with. An image distance is positive for a lens when it's on the other side of a lens. An image distance is positive for a lens when it's a real image. That's the same as it was for mirrors. Object distances will always be positive. Converging lenses will have positive focal lengths. Diverging lenses will have negative focal lengths. I'm going to show you the diverging lenses in a second video, which I may or may not just link together with this one. 